My sister is an introvert, so her freshman year at college was really tough. She had a horrible roommate who would stay up late, who left the room a mess, and refused to take out the trash. And after each altercation, which my kind-hearted sister would inevitably, inevitably lose, she would go outside and smoke a cigarette. She was also a, a math major, so her classes were extremely regular, rigorous. And every time she received a failing grade, my sister would just smoke and forget about it. She broke up with her boyfriend of three years that year. He was in Pennsylvania, she was in California, and long distance is hard. Breaking up with him was harder, and she smoked a whole pack of cigarettes that night. Most Americans are like my sister. We prefer to cover up our problems rather than confront them. We use temporary stress relievers to forget the fact that we failed that test, that we were passed over for that promotion, or that we went through a breakup. We want to live a life free of suffering. This desire for instantaneous relief is so great that it overcomes our long-term concerns for health. In a recent 2002 study, 6,000 Wisconsin residents were asked, why do you smoke? And the top reasons are as follows. To relieve stress. It relaxes me. I like it. And for social reasons. Yet when asked, do you think that your tobacco use is negatively affecting your health? 65% of light smokers, 68% of moderate smokers, and 70% of heavy smokers said yes. 90% of the 42.1 million Americans who smoke tried their first cigarette by the age of 18, and 99% by the age of 26. Worldwide, tobacco use is the cause for more than 5 million deaths a year, and on average, a smoker dies 10 years earlier than a non-smoker. With these rates, one out of every 13 children aged 17 years or younger will die prematurely due to a smoking-related illness. Yet thousands of people choose to smoke every day to relieve stress. The cigarette industry feeds into this conception. They market the in-the-moment experience of smoking a cigarette, and the long-term side effects are ignored. Despite the fact they are, that they are banned from TV, radio, billboard advertisements, and event sponsorships, and have to place the Surgeon General's warning on every cigarette pack they produce, cigarette companies are spending more now in marketing than ever before. In 2011, they spent $8.8 .8 .8 billion in advertising. To get around these bans, they use price-related marketing and point-of-sale marketing. You see, by offering discounted products to convenience stores, cigarette companies are incentivizing these stores to buy more. And once they have more, they are more likely to advertise cigarettes around their store to sell more. In addition, these discounted prices allow the convenience stores to lower their prices to consumers. And as in most cases, a decreased price will increase sales. Now in this industry that feeds off of the public avoidance of suffering, there is one company with a mission to make its consumers aware of the harmful effects of tobacco smoke. Marlboro Cigarettes is a subsidiary of the Autry Group, and this well-known brand accounts for four out of every 10 packs of cigarettes sold. Despite this, the Autry Group does not use the same language as other cigarette companies. They don't talk about the individual's choice in choosing to smoke. They don't deny that nicotine is addictive. They even say that cigarettes cannot be thought of as just another product because of their harmful side effects. Altria is striving to make the public aware that the short-term, temporary pleasure of smoking a cigarette does not outweigh the long-term. Altria, along with other anti-smoking corporations, played a central role in passing legislation in 2009 that allowed the Food and Drug Administration to regulate the tobacco industry. They now have the power, the FDA now has the power, to block or approve new products. They could, in essence, shut down the entire tobacco industry. And Altria has been pushing for this legislation since 2001. In addition, they have invested millions of dollars in research and development for new, less harmful products. So the question becomes why? Why are they pushing for legislation that could shut down their industry? Is this some sort of scheme to prevent companies from entering the market? The reason why Altria has pushed for this legislation uses different language than other cigarette industries. And has invested so much to produce new, less harmful products is simply this. Altria's leaders are getting older. The CEO, Martin J. Barrington, is 63 years old and has been with the company for over 20 years. 
John R. Nelson Jr. Is an, executive vice is an executive vice president who is 61 years old and has been with the company since 1982. Steve Paresh is a senior vice president. He's again over 60 and has been with the company for over 20 years. These industry leaders will not be in the business much longer. As they age, they are confronted with their own mortality and the fleeting nature of life on Earth. As the New York Times discovered in an interview with Steve Paresh, they want a little redemption for themselves and their company. So why not just shut down Altria? Why not just stop making cigarettes? Well, Paresh covered this in his interview when he said, I honestly believe that if Altria were to shut down tomorrow, it would not reduce the consumption of cigarettes at all. I think the marketplace will be turned over to literally hundreds of companies who will be competing overnight for half of the share of the industry. These men are in positions of power to decrease the sale of cigarettes and the harmful side effects. To put this in a broader sense, why do these men see cigarette smoking as bad? Why is this not a good way to relieve stress, to keep down weight, to feel good? The common answer is because cigarettes lead to cancer, most notably lung cancer, which leads to death, despite the fact thousands of people still smoke every day. American society is constantly seeking the temporal pleasure, whether that's eating a 7,000 calorie Mickey D's meal or spending a weekend smoking marijuana. We want to escape the harshness of life. Smoking isn't bad just because the reasons anti-smoking commercials tell you. It isn't bad because it kills you. Smoking and other temporary stress relievers don't actually confront the reason why we are stressed out. We are suffering but pretending that we are not suffering. Part of the human's mortal commission is the necessity of suffering. We must embrace suffering so, it can, so that we can grow. I know no one in this room likes to talk about Nietzsche, but I think there's something valuable in what he says about courage. Nietzsche ends his parable, The Vision and the Riddle, with a scene wherein Zarathustra comes upon a shepherd who has a snake stuck in his throat. After choking for some time, the shepherd finally swallows the snake. Without getting too far into the mud, the snake represents the shepherd's fear, fears. After the shepherd swallows the snake, he lets out what Nietzsche calls an inhuman laugh. He has endured suffering and has become a different, better person. When we rely on temporary relief from discomfort, we are just pretending that a snake is not caught in our throat. But that doesn't change the fact that a snake is caught in our throat. We will inevitably suffer, and we must courageously face that suffering. For my sister, that snake was loneliness from a breakup, failure with her grades, and confrontation with her roommate. And instead of facing that suffering, she smoked to forget about it. The cigarette industry thrives on the public avoidance of suffering. Altria is, trying, is striving to lower the sales of cigarettes and make its consumers aware of the harmful effects. But even Altria doesn't understand that suffering is inevitable. They are only trying to reduce the pain that cigarettes cause. Their actions expose an important facet of the American condition, which is to live a life free of suffering at the expense of courage. Thank you.